Hello guys, um, I haven't made a video in a while and uh, cause I uh, haven't really gotten around to it or I just, you know, I just wasn't really feeling making YouTube videos, especially since no one watches them, so hopefully they start watching them, but I'm going to start posting again whether people watch them or not. Um, yes, I'm in my pajamas still, if you have a problem with it, I'm sorry. Um, but in this video, I'm going to talk about Detroit sports, mainly about the Lions, Tigers, and Pistons. I'm not really going to talk much about the Red Wings. I mean, I'm not really much of a hockey person. I mean, I'll watch the Red Wings because they're a Detroit team, but I don't know much about hockey. Like, I know the, I know the basics of the game. Like, I know you know you, you got to put the puck in the net, and that's how you score a goal. And I know there's checking and penalties, high sticking, and all that. But like, I'm not really a follower of hockey. So I'll mainly talk about the other three. So let's start off with what's going on right now. The Detroit Pistons. They just kicked off their second half of the season like the rest of the league did. The All-Star weekend was, I think, last week, if not two weeks ago. Um, Pistons are not making the playoffs this year unless they win out, and I do not see that happening. I mean, they will win games. For from now to the end of the year, but they're not going to win a lot because uh, we're rebuilding. Um, that's what happens when you're rebuilding. Not really, not usually that good. I mean, sometimes you have that Cinderella team that isn't rebuilding and they win a lot and make the playoffs, but it's rare. Um, but I am liking what I'm seeing from the Pistons. I am liking what Troy Weaver has been doing. Um, I love the rookies we have. Isaiah Stewart, Sadiq Bey, Saban Lee, I love them. I feel like they're going to become a really good uh, core of this team. Um, hopefully Killian Hayes comes back sometime this year from the injury. He said he's clear for basketball activities and re-evaluated re in three weeks. So hopefully he can come back and play at the end of the year. Um, I still have hope for him. I'm still, I, he's only 19. You know, I hope he can you know, progress the way they're, think, they're saying he is. He's just a raw talent. That's what it is. He's raw come from overseas so you know I think it's gonna take time for to progress him and he fits our timetable I mean we're not gonna be that competitive for the next this year or maybe not even next year but um, I don't know but hopefully Killian Hayes can become that centerpiece of the team but uh, we still have other young guys that I'm really excited to have on the team like Josh Jackson Jeremy Grant uh, Diallo, Diallo, we just traded for for Speed Mikhailuk. I feel like he's going to become a really good player for this team. Um, I'm really excited to have him on the team. Uh, he's only 22, so um, I'm really looking forward to having him. Uh, I mean, we got some young pieces. They're just young, and we just got to develop them. So, you know, hopefully uh, we should... Uh, Develop these guys and become competitive in the next uh, one or two years. Um, now, and hopefully we get lucky in this free agency that's coming up in the draft. We're not going to have a lot of money because of Blake Griffin and the buyout. But hopefully we can draft well. I mean, my top four prospects for this year's draft, that I want the Lions, not the Lions, the Pistons to choose from is in this order. Cade Cunningham, Jalen Suggs, Jalen Green. And I said four. But those are actually my three. I don't really have a fourth. If I have a fourth, it'll be Mobley. But um, I just feel like Kate Cunningham is going to become a superstar in this league. A lot of people think that he isn't, but I think he can be. I mean, he can shoot. He can pass. He's, you know, a good defender. And he's 6'8". I mean, he's a point guard 6'8". He's like a Ben Simmons. He's tall where he can see over the guys. So, I mean, you know, I feel like he'd be a really good part of the team. Now, if we cannot get Kate Cunningham because he's probably going number one, and the Pistons don't get number one. There's other guys in the draft, like Jalen Suggs from Gonzaga. I, I love his game as well. He may not be 6'8", but I mean, he can shoot. He's clutch. He has good defense. So, I mean, I I, I love what I see from Jalen Suggs. But I'd rather have Kate Cunningham. But if I can't have him, I'd rather have Jalen Suggs or Jalen Green. Um, so, those are the guys that I really you know want the Pistons to go after. And, of course, there's the trade deadline coming up. Maybe... Troy Weaver will make another trade or whatever, and come draft time, I wouldn't be surprised if we make some trades like I did last like last draft. So um, we'll see what Troy Weaver does. I trust Troy Weaver. Um, Dwayne Casey, I, I I think I said this before, where I'm, I think he should get fired, but I've changed my mind. 
I like Dwayne Casey. He is good at developing young guys, and that's basically what we need right now. We need a coach who can develop young guys, and that is Dwayne Casey. He won the coach of the year when he got fired, so he's not a bad coach. So, you know, I feel like that once we develop our guys, I think we're going to be like a third or fourth seed. I, I, I'm saying that right now. I think that once we are develop our guys, maybe not next year, but the year after that, I feel like that we can... I feel like next year, if the draft goes our way and we can get a few pieces for agency, we can make a 7th or 8th seed to make the playoffs. But I think that, I mean, after next year, we could become that higher seed and really be a force to be with in the East. So, um, like I said, I trust Roy Weaver. Trust Wayne Casey. Um, we just got to get through this year and possibly even next year before business is going to be good again. Um, let's see. Next, we should talk about the Lions. What a off season the Detroit Lions have been having. This hasn't been that you know super spectacular off season that you know every team wants, but I feel like it's been great. Um, yes, it's sad to see Stafford go. The trade has become official, but what we got in return though, like two first round picks, a third round pick for this year, and Jared Goff. I mean. You couldn't ask for much more than what Brad Holmes got. So, um, we're also in rebuilding that team as well. So, these picks help our team. I mean, it's going to help our future. So, uh, and we didn't really have to give up much. All he had to give was Matthew Stafford. So, um, and to think about Jared Goff, like, I still have faith in Jared. He's only 25 years old. He brought a team to a Super Bowl. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, but it was mainly because he got carried by his defense. Well, if that's the case, though, then maybe the, you know, the whole, if, if a defense carries a team, then maybe the offense shouldn't go out on the field. I mean, even if your defense is really good, to make it to the Super Bowl, your offense has to make plays to win the game. Your defense can't do it all. Your offense has to make plays. And that's, and that is on your quarterback. So Derek Goff still had to make plays in that season to make it to the Super Bowl. Now, yes, he choked in the Super Bowl. He didn't have a great game. But every player has a bad game. And Derek Goff happened to be in the Super Bowl. Worst possible time, I know, but it happens. And yes, I know he hasn't really progressed since that year. But he is not no scrub. He is not a scrub. Like, he can still throw the ball. He can still play quarterback. He can win you games. And I just feel like, you know, a new team, fresh start, you know, hopefully that should help him. Lions quarterback's coach is Mark Brunel, who was a pro bowler quarterback in his time. So maybe, you know, the new team and all the former players can help him become, like, rejuvenate his career. Like I said, he's only 25. But at the very least, we got ourselves a, a, a quarterback that can keep us afloat until we get a franchise guy, if it's not Jared Goff. Like, you know... He can keep us afloat until we get a quarterback we can either develop or draft or whatever, you know. So, in all in all, this is not terrible. And in this year's draft, a lot of people say, maybe we should go after Trey Lance or Zach Wilson, Justin Fields in this draft of the quarterback. I mean, I wouldn't be so shocked if they do that, but I hope they don't. Since we have Jared Goff, a quarterback isn't really a necessity right now. We need other things like defense mainly, like our linebackers or cornerback or wide receiver. I mean, I mean the guys that I want to go after, I have seven guys in mind. Linebacker, Micah Parsons from Penn State. I like him. I feel like he's going to be a really good linebacker. I mean, our linebackers suck. We already lost Jared Davis, and Devai is the worst linebacker I've ever seen. So, um, yeah, I, I like Michael Parsons. On the other defensive side, the three cornerbacks I like is Patrick Certain. I think his name is Patrick. From Alabama, Jace Horn and Caleb Fairley. Yeah, Caleb Fairley. Those are the three cornerbacks I like. Um, the wide receivers, I love Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell. I know that's seven. But if we are going to go for a quarterback, I wouldn't mind Trey Lance. He has a heck of an arm. He is athletic. Um, I think Jack Wilson's going number two. And I think Justin Fields is going to go before seven. But I just feel like that Trey Lance... I just, I just like him, but I'd rather pick Trey Lance last if, you know, I'd rather pick the first seven guys I said before Trey Lance since we already have Derek Goff 
quarterback is not that much of a necessity because we I think we need to in the, you know earlier rounds like the first three rounds I think we should go after the more the necessity parts like low wide receiver defense offensive line those type of things now I did a mock draft you know my recent one I did have Trey Lance going with us but I also wanted my Michael Parsons but if we did choose not a linebacker in the first round let's say we choose Caleb Fairley. Then the second round, I wouldn't mind Baron Browning, linebacker at Ohio State. He was also always there, in, you know, in the mock draft. Second round, Baron Browning. He's also a really good linebacker. He played well at Ohio State. I wouldn't mind having him. And then even in the third round, we have two picks. In the first one, I've always picked Dylan Moses, another linebacker from Alabama. I think he's going to be a stud. And if he falls to, you know, third round, we should choose him. Now, in the second, third round, I always choose Nico Collins, wide receiver from Michigan. Yes, I know he didn't play last year. But the thing I like about Nico Collins is he is tall, he is fast, and he's big. So, which means he can win the 50-50 balls. He can run the, you know, run the goal routes. He can, you know, catch and run. I mean, I, I just like what I see from Nico Collins. So, I think that he's going to be an underrated. I think he's an underrated wide receiver coming in this year's draft. And I think whoever chooses him is going to pick up a dog. So, um, I hope the Lions can get him. Uh, hope our wide receiver core. Uh, but, um, and then I also like Sean Wade, safety from Ohio State. I like, I like a lot of Ohio State guys, but, um, if we do choose a quarterback, I'd rather do doing later rounds, like this, like the late fifth or the sixth, and like a guy like Kyle Trask, Ian Book, Sam Ellinger, you know, I, I'd rather do that and, pick the necessities first then the quarterback but we'll see what happens i trust uh like i said with troy weaver i trust um brad holmes i mean the pit the free agent acquisitions acquisitions he's had so far they haven't been like oh my god we're gonna be a great team now but no we don't have a lot of cash space so he's working with not a lot of money and what he's been able to get i feel like is really good tyrell williams Yes, he's 29. Yes, it's a one-year contract, but he can run the route tree. So, I mean, we need guys that Jared Goff can throw to. And Jer and Tyre Tyrell Williams can also mentor the young guys, the younger guys, like Quintus Cephas and whoever else we get in the draft. So, I like the pickup. I also like the Bashad Perriman pickup. He has speed. I mean, he ran an unofficial 4.19 in the combine, but I think the official was like 4.22. But, um... Still fast as still still fast as hell. Um, so uh, I like him, and his father actually played for the Lions. Was a star, Pete Perriman. Um, but uh, like that, and I also like Jamal Williams, that running back. I feel like the DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams duo is going to be really good. Jamal Williams has never fumbled in his career. He's only twenty five, two year contract. So I mean. I feel like the next couple of years, the running back duo is going to be kind of fun to see. I don't know what they're going to do with Carrion Johnson. They may run a three running back system like they did last year, or they may trade Carrion. We will see what happens. Um, uh, you know, we got a new kicker as well. Hopefully, Bullock, that guy, will do good. Um, and then the defensive side, uh, that, uh, God, what's his name? God, I can't remember his name. I, I just looked at it. We just, you know, as a defensive end, that we was a former first round pick in 2017, we got from Miami and Falcons. Hopefully, he can, you know, do well. Like, you know, like I said, all these guys that we've gotten really wasn't like that big, big name players, but we don't have the money to get them. I mean, I would like to see if we can get Juju Smith Schuster. That'd be great if we can try to get him, but I don't think so. Um, so it looks like though that Brad Holmes wants to put out a semi-competitive team next year. I mean, even Terry Williams said that he doesn't really see this as a rebuild. He still thinks that we can make the playoffs and have a chance for the Super Bowl, which I think he's mistaken. I don't think we're going to have a chance this year. But, I mean, I could see us winning eight games if we stay healthy and play well. But that's pushing it. Uh, but I guess we'll see what happens. I mean, you really never know. It, he is, I mean, Terry Williams is right. It is the NFL. Any team can beat any team on any given Sunday. When we saw the winless Jets going to LA to beat the Rams so I mean it's the NFL any given Sunday I guess but I don't expect the Lions to be good this year I feel like you know they're a 6-10 and 10 team at best so 
we'll see what happens. Um, I'm still gonna go. I'm still gonna root for them every single game. Root for them to win. I'm gonna root for them to make the playoffs every year, just because I'm a fan. But I'm just bracing myself for next year to not be that great. But hopefully, this is not a long rebuild. Hopefully, in one or two years, you know, it's just like the Pistons. This coming up offseason after this year, we're not gonna have a lot of money because of the. No, actually, I'm wrong. After this season, we're gonna have a ton of money. After the Stafford trade is gone and every other penalty zone, we're gonna have a ton of money after this off season. After the season, so we could potentially have this year suck, have another good draft pick in the draft, have a bunch of money, and then have a good team. I feel like that that's what that's what's gonna happen. Hopefully, it works out. But that's uh, that's the Lions. Um, my prediction is six and ten. That is my prediction for record for next season. Hopefully, they'll do better than that, but we'll see what happens. The Tigers. Now, this is another team where this is a this is a crapshoot. I mean, we're coming off a rebuild. We're ending the rebuild, but our prospects aren't really that developed yet. They're probably not going to come out till after this season, or maybe at the, like the end of the season. So this year, maybe another year, will we not do so hot, but we'll be competitive. But you never know. I mean, we got the new manager. Yes, he has the, all that controversy and the cheating scandal and all that. To be honest, I feel like we should just stop with that. It's becoming old. Yes, he cheated. Yes, his team cheated. Yes, it was terrible. Yes, I'm not going to promote cheating. It's terrible. You, you shouldn't do it. You should never cheat. But he served his penalty. He served his consequence. Everyone deserves a second chance. Everyone. And this is his second chance. Fresh start. New team. You know, even Michael, Miguel Cabrera said it earlier. He said that it's he was downplaying it and saying, you know, A.J. Hinch is still an honest guy, passionate guy. You know, he wants to win like every other, you know, manager does. And I agree with Miggy. And everybody's saying, well, he's just saying that so he doesn't get benched. You know what? That's bullshit. You really think Miggy is scared to get benched for as long as he's been in the league, for as long as he's been in the Tigers? You really think he's scared to get benched for talking bad about his manager? No. What he said is true. And even if he did say it was wrong, I highly doubt AJ Hinch is going to bench Miguel Cabrera. I mean, for one thing, Miggy is Miggy. He's been in the league for so long. So, I mean, I, I just don't see A.J. Hinch benching him just because he talks bad. But, I mean, I, I don't know if he, he I don't know if Miguel Cabrera said this or not, but if he did, then I'm taking what he said. But, um, let's say, you know, I know it's bad that he signed Stolen. It's, you know, I'm not promoting it. But, it's still hard to hit the pitches. Even if you know it's coming, you still have to hit it. Hit the pitch. I mean, let's say you know the fastball's coming. You can still strike out swinging. I mean... You still have to hit the ball. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, everybody should sign steal because it's, you know, it's not that difficult. I mean, it's difficult to still hit the pitch, but I'm just saying that everybody deserves a second chance, you know, and here's AJ's second chance. I think it's going to do well. So, I mean, everybody should just stop with the sign steal. It's over. Everybody's, you know, they, they took their consequences, they did them, and now they're back. So, let them... Do what they do. So that's all I pretty much have to say. I'm looking forward to Tigers opening day. Hopefully they can make the playoffs. I'd like to see one of my Detroit teams make the playoffs soon. Um, hopefully Michigan can win the national championship without Isaiah Livers. It's going to be tough. You know, I don't see us making it past the Sweet 16 if we don't have Livers. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm really looking forward to see the Tigers, though. You know, hopefully we can play well and make the playoffs, have a chance for the World Series, but I'm going to try to go to a, a game or two this year, but yeah, um, wouldn't you think that all the Detroit teams are in rebuilding pretty much, the Red Wings are in rebuilding, the Tigers are coming off a rebuild, but are still kind of rebuilding, the Pistons have just started their little rebuild, the Lions have just started their rebuild. It's going to be a while until we see a Detroit team be good again, I feel like. Maybe a year, two years, three years down the road, but 
Um, I guess we have any comfort that three out of the four teams have proven to be a winner. They've won their respective championships. I guess they know how to do it, like the Pistons, Red Wings, Tigers. And I feel like one of them is going to win their championship before the Lions ever do. So, But I still have hope the Lions could win a Super Bowl some point in some time. At this point, I just want to see him win a playoff game first. That's my goal. Just see him win a playoff game. That'll be a first step in the right direction. But Like I said, um, I trust Troy Weaver for the Pistons. I trust Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell for the Lions. And I trust A.J. Hinch for the Tigers. Um, don't know about the Red Wings. Hopefully they can do well. But, yeah. Uh, the life of the Detroit fan. Always heartbreaking. Hopefully one one of these years that they won't break our heart. But it's Detroit. That's what they do. All right. Um, one last thing. Uh, hopefully the Pistons win tonight against the Rockets. The Rockets are on the historic losing streak. I think it's 18 right now. We play the Rockets in Houston. I just feel like knowing that the Pistons, this is going to be the game where the Rockets snap their losing streak against us. Because, like... The thing about this year, the Pistons have lost the games they should have won. They should they, they they're supposed to win and win the games they're not supposed to win. That's how it's feel like this year. So I feel like this is one of those games we're supposed to win, but we're not gonna win. Hopefully they win, but because no none of that, no team in this in this league probably wants to be the one that loses against the Rockets to snap their losing streak, and I hope it's not us. So. Go Pistons. Hopefully they win tonight. And uh, also one more thing. I know I said that earlier, but not Detroit thing. Uh, Tiger Woods has been uh, able to go home to his South Florida home in Jupiter, Florida to be recovering at home. So he's no longer in a hospital. So I guess that's good news. He's no longer in a hospital. He can recover at home, see his kids. Um... I think he will be back. He'll be back on tour. Nothing can stop the GOAT. Not even a car wreck. So, maybe not this year, but I'm hoping next year he'll be recover, get stronger, and he'll be back on tour. Alright. Thanks, y'all, for watching. Uh, I'll try to make more videos. Um, the golf courses are starting to open up here. Maybe they'll take a video of me golfing or whatever. I don't know, but... Let me know what you guys think, and uh, yeah, see you all in the next video. Have a great day, guys.